Hello, today in Forest Schools I'm going to be demonstrating how to make a seat. We're going to be using a log, um, some bits of hazel for legs, and these are the tools that we're going to be using. So we have a pruning saw, handheld auger, axe, knife, mallet, some hazel. Um, I've got a handle here ready, a tap handle for the handheld auger, and a straight edge, which is just a little bit of ash that I've cut away in order to get our holes level along the log. Okay, we've got all our safety equipment, so there'll be a first aid kit on site, first aid person, which is myself, and the radio to call should we need any help from the school. Right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to check the area that I'm working in is um, safe with trip hazards and anything that uh, could cause a fall or trip, so I'll clear the work area that I'm working in. I've almost done that, with the exception of this, which is one I made earlier. So this is what we're looking to create. So it's a log with four legs, like so, and that makes a seat. So this is what we're going to be doing. I'm just going to move this out of the way now. So I'll be asking my participants to choose themselves a nice bit of hazel for the legs. Okay, and a nice log for the seat. This is an activity I would normally ask my participants to do in pairs. So there would be two people per this activity. And that would mean that heavy lifting of logs like that would be done between the two of them. And each team would have a dolly so they can use the dolly then in order to help them cut what they need to cut. So first thing we're going to be using is our saw and we're going to be looking at making our legs from our piece of hazel. So once the piece of hazel is um, firmly in the dolly, one participant would hold the hazel and the other participant would cut. They would alternate so that they would all get a chance to cut the legs for their seat. There will be a total of six legs um, that's because this particular log is a little bit longer than that one and four wouldn't be sufficient so that's about a meter long so it would require three legs on each side and um, because I'm doing this on my own I'm going to use my log to steady my hazel so health and safety for lifting purposes as well I always demonstrate lifting so you want to lift with your knees not your back so keep your back as straight as possible and lift with your knees and I'm going to place my log on top of my hazel, like so, to give me some way uh, to hold my hazel down so I cut it. I'm going to remove the glove from my dominant hand. And I'm going to open, open my saw using my finger and all my, my thumb and my, all my fingers on the handle of the saw. And then my dominant hand then is going to unfold it and click it and lock it in position. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to put my glove back on. Come back over to the hazel that I'm going to cut for the legs. I always um, tell my participants to use a cross hand stance when they're cutting. So your non-dominant hand is going over and your saw is coming under. And what this does, it stops the saw from being able to bounce and land on the participant's hand. Okay, so if they were holding it like this, for example, and the saw bounced, that's impossible with this stance, which is why I, I like it so much. Okay, so they're gonna be, one participant's gonna be doing the sawing, the other participant will be holding the hazel, and using a backwards and forwards motion, they're gonna cut through the hazel. Okay, once they finish their cut, they fold their knife away. And place it in the storage container. Okay, so they would have used some I've made earlier. So I've cut myself six legs ready now for this particular demonstration. Now I'm gonna choose the best place to start now putting my legs in so I think that's, I think that's good right so the next thing I'm going to be using is my auger 
Now with the safety demonstration, I would have already explained to them about their blood bubble. They'll be familiar with their blood bubble because I wouldn't start participants off building something like this. This is something that we, they would work towards. Um, so a lot of the health and safety would already be covered in previous demonstrations. But while I would be demonstration, uh, doing a demonstration of this, I would always reiterate the importance of your blood bubble and that no one is working, no one other than your team member is in your area at the time, okay? So we remove our auger and we get our auger and tap handle. Ready? Place the tap handle through the auger. And remove the auger from the case. So now I'm going to be looking at putting the first hole inside this here. So I will get my long edge, my straight edge. Run my straight edge along the log and choose a sensible place to begin. So with the auger now, I'm going to apply a small amount of pressure in order for the auger to start tapping into this bit of ash. So once the auger starts, it'll drag itself into the log. What you need to do first though is get it to tap. So I'm going to apply a little pressure and twist the auger in a clockwise direction. Okay, so the auger now has tapped into the log. What I'm going to be looking at now is just straightening up my auger and making sure that it's going to bore the required hole that I need in there at the right angle. So you're just looking at something like that. You don't want it too wide, because if it was too wide, the legs will splay apart when you go to sit on it. So you want to get a nice angle like so. So you want to be looking at that sort of direction, which it is. And then I'm just going to continue to twist my tap handle, allowing the auger to bore a hole in the log. Okay, so I've taken the bore now in as far as all the blades are taken in. So now I'm gonna put on my safety glasses and I'm going to clear the debris from the top of the hole by giving it a blow. Then I'm going to grab hold of my tap handle again and I'm going to turn it anti-clockwise to release the tapping part of the auger. I'm going to allow that to unwind until it becomes very loose. So, and then I'm going to remove the auger carefully from the hole, take the auger from the handle, and place the auger back into the sheath, then I'm going to clear the hole of all the debris. Come and look. So that's the depth of the the hole there. Okay, it's a nice clean hole, and that'll that'll uh, be one of our legs. So now we just need need to make another one, two, three, four, five holes. All right. So uh, let's begin now with another one. So I'm going to take my straight edge. 
I'm going to put it over the top of the hole I've done on that side. And I'm going to run it. It's not an exact science, as you can tell. But I'm going to run it down the log, trying to keep the log in a straight position. Put my glove back on now. Remove my auger. Put the tap handle, we'll turn the tap handle. Now I'm going to begin to bore my second hole. Try and encourage all the participants to keep their working area free of debris and trip hazards. And then commence with the second hole. Again, apply in a small amount of pressure until the self-tapping section of the auger starts to bite into there. It's going to be quite difficult with this as it doesn't bite through the bark. Once you've made it through the bark and you're actually into the ash, it becomes easy. Okay, so they started and then same process as before I want to make sure that all my holes are lined up so I'm just gonna eye that up there it looks good to me and I'm gonna commence now boring my second hole okay so I finished boring now my second hole I'm gonna reverse now going anti-clockwise going to unscrew that auger. Okay, like so. It'll wind itself out nice and gently. It'll get easier and easier. So, auger. Let's move. I'm going to return the auger then to the case. A little bit of a tap there. Get the We'll just out place the auger back into the case now. So, okay, it's my second hole, so I'm going to clear it. And there's my second hole. You'll notice there's a hole here. This is one from my previous video that didn't go well. But um, it's in a good place there, and you can feel it's, they're in a good uh, good direction. So they're both facing the direction that's required. All right, so now we have three holes. I'm going to carry on now, and I'm going to put another hole here, and then two holes here. So I'm going to, again, line up my straight edge, and that'll tell me where I need to place my second hole. Fourth hole now. My auger. Remove my auger from the case. So it's somewhere safe. And I'm going to line up. Like so. I'm going to commence then with the third hole. Now again, I would. These are gonna, this is going to be a team effort, so I would encourage my participants to share the load of this. So taking turns, as with the sawing, same with the um, auger work. And them all have a go. Okay, so we've complete, completed all the holes now in our log. Next thing we need to work on is our feet. So we've cut our six legs from hazel. We do in a previous session or earlier on in the morning. And they're all roughly the same height. Now we need to use our auger 
and our axe and our push craft knife. And what we're going to be looking to do is the ring of the auger is the size of the hole. So we need to get that matched up there. So we're going to take away this much of the peg and just chamfer it down with the axe and we're, and we're going to finish off the light work then with the bushcraft saw and get those in to fit in those holes. Right, so again, prior to, we would have done a demonstration before any of this and there's adequate supervision for participants before they use any sharp tools. Um, so they would already be aware of the blood bubble or safety bubble and where uh, they need a, a good workbench to use the axe on, nice and stable. And um, then I'm going to give them a demonstration similar to what I'm doing now of how to cut and pin away that knife. So I want them down on one knee, like so. Alright, safety glasses are on. They don't need to be on, but if they, if they think there's going to be flying debris, it's fine. So they're going to be resting their forearm on their leg, like so, and then holding the peg in their non dominant hand and the axe in their dominant hand, they're going to be using downward motion away from their bodies, like so, and they're going to slowly chip away. I've explained to participants that this is more in the wrist than the arm, so I don't want them to see them swing in like this. Of course, they'd be using slow, steady motions with their wrist, keeping their forearms, forearms still, using their wrist to lift and chop away from their bodies, like so. Okay, so they've um, took the most coarse part of the stick away. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work on just rounding off the edges. So for this section here, I think I'm going to ask them to use the bushcraft knife to take away the shoulders on their axe cuts and make that more of a circular, um, circular stick. All right, so. For this I'm going to use my newly acquired chair. I'm going to sit down like so. Now I'm going to take my glove off my dominant hand. The reason I'm doing this is because I want a firm grip on the handle of the knife. Okay. And I'm going to pull out of the sheath like that, keeping the edge away from any bodily parts. And very similar then, I'm going to hold the stick down like this. And I have a firm grip on my bushcraft knife and I'm going to draw the knife down those shoulders just taking away those edges Okay, I'm happy with that as soon as I finish that. I'm going to replace the knife in the sheath, like so, and then click it into place. I'm going to pick my sheath up and my knife and place it back in the same place. And then I'm going to take my, my leg and I'm going to come back to my seat and I'm going to start by placing probably see better with that one there so I'm going to place that in there like so and now I'm going to strike the top with mallet as 
soon as you start hearing it echo all the way up the log, you'll know that you're in there full depth. And it's not going in anymore. Check that, it's nice and secure. And there's the first leg. Okay, so we're going to take in turns with this, as I said. Participants will be in pairs doing this. So I would encourage one to sit and watch while one peg was done, and then for them to swap over, and so each of them get a turn. So we're going to go through the same process now with peg number two. Down on one knee. And we're going to take away the shoulders using the wrists in a motion in a downward motion of working away from the body. Another thing I would say is, is you don't need to hold it at the handle. You can have more control of the axe if you hold it up by the hilt, but you're not having to use big whacks. So you're just using a wrist action. Let the blade do the work and give more emphasis on where you're hitting it than the force that you're putting in it. And just keep working along until. Similar to the knife, you want to be taking away the shoulders. So once you've done one cut, you've created two shoulders and go away and then can move along and take away the next shoulder. And just keep chipping away there. So we've got somewhere near the edge. Okay, I've finished now with the axle. Place the axe in the sheath. And then we're going to work on with my bushcraft knife, so come back over. Again, using the same motion, pulling the knife out and away from the body, and then working to just round off those shoulders. What I would say as well, if they're working in pairs with this, is to make sure that they get the right size and they don't go too small. They could put their sheath, put their knife back in their sheath, pass their, pair, their leg to their partner, their partner can take it to the, their um, seat and see how it looks to fit and then bring it back if it needs some more taken off. So I think that's sufficient now for this one. So we're gonna come over now and we're gonna Put the knife back in the tin and as before, oh, here we are. We need to take a little bit more off there, take some more off.
Okay. Place the knife in the sheath. You just check, check for the best position of the stick. It's obviously sticks are not straight, so just look for the bends and you want to go get the bends in the right direction. And there you go on this. Leg number two. Right, I'll pause this year and I'll continue now until we get to the end so that you can see the end, the end product. All right, so um, I've done all the rest of the legs now. I'm on my final leg. And I just wanted to see if you could listen to me hammering this one in. And for the difference in the cue sticks of when it is, is still entering there and when it's reached as far as it'll go. So it should have a different tone. So it'll sound more like that when you've hit the bottom. Hopefully. I want to make sure my legs are straight there and just, if need be, adjust, adjust them slightly. There's the last one. You hear the difference in tone there? So you know now, sounds more like that when it's fit there. All right, so, just going to put this back in a safe place. Touch wood. Because I can. Now again, I would um, ask my participants to share the load on this. But as I'm doing this on my own, I'm going to have to load, uh, carefully pick it up. So I'm going to grab it and uh, lift it off the dolly. And place it on the ground. And just... Put it in place like so, and there you go, perfect. And that's how you make a log seat. <laughs>